Hey everyone, back with another video this week and today I thought I'd talk about sleep tracking, how you can do it if you want to, why you should do it, you know, what are the potential benefits and specifically an app called Sleep Cycle which I myself have been using and what the potential benefits of that app are, so stay tuned. The reason I think it's a good idea to track your sleep and the reason I started tracking my sleep is because if there's something wrong with your sleep patterns, if like myself you find that it was taking too long to fall asleep and you weren't really feeling well rested in the morning, then it's good to actually have some evidence to back that up to see what's going on, you know, how long does it take you to fall asleep at night, how many hours of good sleep are you actually getting and all of that. So that's a potential benefit, or at least the main reason why I started tracking my sleep. Moving on though, I guess the most important thing is how can you actually implement this? And I've tried a few apps. Out of all of the different ones that I've tried, the best one I've found is called Sleep Cycle, so I'll talk about that a bit in this video. I personally have an iPhone and I happen to have an Apple Watch as well, but I have checked and you can actually get this app on the Google Play Store, so if you have an Android device, don't worry, I've got you guys. But if you do have an Apple Watch, and I'm not sure whether you can do this with other Android smartwatches, but with the Apple Watch at least, you can select on the app to use the watch's accelerometer to detect your sleep patterns at night, which is gonna be more accurate than the alternative, which is to use your phone microphone to listen out for your movements. So if you do have an Apple Watch, and perhaps it works with other smartwatches as well, you do get that added benefit. Okay, so say you've got the app, you've tracked your first night's sleep, what information are you actually gonna get out of it? So first of all, you're gonna get a cool graph which shows you the different sleep cycles, you know, when you were in light sleep, when you're in deep sleep, when you were awake during the night, which isn't gonna mean that much probably to most of us out there, but it is cool just to see and just to be able to say, oh yes, I did wake up at three in the morning and maybe that's why I'm really tired right now. But other than that, it breaks it down into some more simple statistics, which are going to be more useful for most people out there. For example, the first one is called regularity, which is going to track how regularly you wake up or go to bed at the same times. And apparently that's one of the most important things to getting a good night's sleep on a regular basis. So that's the first thing you get. You also get one of my favorites, which is called a sleep after. And that's going to tell you how many minutes it took you to fall asleep after you went to bed. And for me, that was my main issue. It used to take me a really long time to fall asleep after I went to bed. But one thing to take note of is when you're lying in bed, like five minutes can feel like quite a long time. But in reality, when you look at the app and you see the asleep after is only like 20 minutes when it felt like it took hours to go to bed, then it's, it can be quite reassuring just to see it didn't actually take you that long to go to bed. Or maybe it did, and that means you might want to change something. The last main statistic that it gives you is called quality, and that means like sleep quality. It's a percentage out of 100, and obviously the aim is to get as high as possible on a regular basis. Now, if you're getting a really low score consistently, then that might be a good indication that you need to change some patterns, you know, maybe change the way you drink caffeine during the day, not have it too late, maybe not look at your screen too late at night, or do something in the morning that's gonna set you up for a better sleep at night, like I explained in one of my other videos, my morning routine video, so definitely check that out. Summing up all of that stuff though, you get a really nice weekly report at the end of every week, which sort of gives you the trends during your week of your sleep quality, your regularity, all of that good stuff, so you can see whether on a more long-term basis your sleep quality is improving or getting worse, and take measure from that. I guess it is important to mention though that the simple act of just tracking your sleep and looking at all this data isn't going to make any difference to your actual sleep quality. What's going to make the difference is if you see that your sleep quality is not doing so well and try different things during the day to actually improve that, like not looking at your phone late at night, not having caffeine too late in the day, making sure that you see the sunlight for at least half an hour every morning after sunrise, like I mentioned in my morning routine video, and many other things like that. Maybe even listening to slim sleep Maybe even listening to some sleep sounds like I'll talk about in just a second. If you have tried everything else, you know, you've improved everything, your day is perfect. You couldn't possibly do anything else to have a better night's sleep or to fall asleep quicker at night. Another last resort that you can possibly try is called Sleep Sounds, and they have it on the same Sleep Cycles app, 
although you can get other wraps for that as well. And it's basically just some white noise or other stuff like that, like rainfall or birds singing and stuff like that, which are supposedly gonna make you fall asleep faster. I've personally tried these in the past and found that they didn't really work too well. The one that worked best for me was the rainforest, like rain sound, but still I don't really think it made much of a difference. But definitely try it out, it has worked for lots of other people, so it might work for you. There are a couple of extra cool features which you get on this app, which I haven't really seen on many other apps out there. The first of which is smart alarms. Now, what this will do is, say you set an alarm time of 7 a.m., there'll be a window before that, normally about half an hour, so from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. that you're okay to wake up in. And the app will find a period during that window that you're in light sleep or even already awake in, and sound the alarm during those parts of your sleep cycle rather than deep sleep. And what that supposedly does is it makes sure that you're not gonna feel groggy or tired or whatever when you wake up because you're already pretty much awake. Whether this actually works as well as they say, I have my doubts about because I have tried it a few times and to be honest, I felt quite tired when I woke up as opposed to using my sunrise alarm clock, which I've discussed in another video which I found works a lot better. But definitely try this out. It does work supposedly, and if you are waking up in light sleep or even during awake periods, rather than deep sleep, it's probably gonna be better for you. So it might be worth trying it out. The other cool feature which sounds particularly futuristic is smart home integration on the app. And what this will do is, in particular, it seems it works with HomeKit devices and Philips Hughes devices, is that you'll be able to link your smart home devices with the app and for example when you're waking up you could have the lights turn on in your room or the temperature in the room increase and when you go to bed you could have the lights dim and turn off and the thermostat decrease the temperature in the room and other stuff like that which seems really cool really futuristic and could really help you wake up in the morning or fall asleep at night as well which i think is particularly interesting Definitely let me know in the comments section below if you have tried this out already or if you're going to try this out because I'd be really interested to see whether it helps you fall asleep at night or helps you feel more alert in the morning with lights and thermostat control and all of that cool stuff. Well those were my thoughts on sleep tracking and the sleep cycle app as well. It's definitely a good idea to track your sleep especially if you feel like you're not getting good sleep quality, you're taking a long time to fall asleep at night and you're tired when you wake up and during the day can be a good indication or it can give you the data to see what's actually happening during the night and what's going wrong. It's not gonna change anything though. The important part is to actually implement something to change or improve your sleep quality. So that might be doing something differently in the lead up to bedtime, doing something differently during the day, doing something differently in the morning even. You know, maybe changing when you drink caffeine, that sort of thing. So definitely you want to implement stuff to improve the sleep quality not just look at the data because that's not going to do anything. But that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd be really interested to hear in the comment section below what sort of stuff you guys have tried to improve your sleep and how your sleep quality is as well if you started tracking it. Let me know in the comment section below. If you did like the video then please leave a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm and if you want to see more content like this in the future then smash that subscribe button and notification bell below.